Start recording. All right. If we're live and you're hearing me, um, yeah, we. this is a pre-recorded episode with the Stick Up Boys because of the, the time difference. And it's actually one minute longer than an hour or one second longer than an hour. So I'm just going to start playing it. You guys are going to hear it. And me and Polar's going to be going quiet. Polar's in the middle of a tornado war zone. So his power is hitting Midas anyways. So enjoy. And it's a sign on the door. Says what you're doing that for. I can't get it right. My three don't make four. The way that I move. The way I lose everything. The marvelous way. I walk in my shoes. Okay, now, where you came from to, or what, where you envisioned yourself when you were first made your decision to get into doing music, is that different than what you're, we've got actual going now, like your, what you, your expectation was and what reality is? Uh Oh, not really. I mean, you know, I always really wanted to work in studios and, and, and do production and writing, which is kind of what I've, I've been lucky enough to do, um, you know, and also do a bit of teaching. I've, you know, I've always done a bit of teaching as well, which I love doing. And um, I used to do a lot of performing as well. Not so not so much and certainly not since uh, COVID. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I feel quite, quite, quite privileged uh, yeah, to be to be doing music and working in studios and getting to work with you know, all sorts of artists from all around the world, um, which is, yeah, I feel I feel quite lucky. Quite lucky. Nice. That's cool. Now, you know, obviously you said you grew up in a 
very music oriented house. What what kind of what kind of your is your favorite not favorite but your biggest influences? I guess it's it's going to be weird because the Stick Up Boys are essentially kind of quirky electronic pop. But I grew up really with that kind of love of English and American folk from things like my first instrument was steel string acoustic guitar. Nice. So it was it was things like Lead Belly and uh, Yanch in England, David Graham in England, Woody Guthrie, Bob Dylan. You know all these you know kind of kind of American and English kind of folk blues players that kind of really that's the stuff that I started learning. You know, I was sitting there finger picking on acoustic guitar. That that's where I started kind of kind of doing music. So kind of real roots of roots of music. You know. And listening to early Robert Johnson, you know, from the and, and Lead Belly and stuff like that. So yeah, really root stuff. Yeah, I've I've, I've noticed that some over the, with all the people I've talked to, the influences don't exactly translate to what their music sounds like currently. Because <laughs> it's it's like you know, you you're talking blues and you guys are obviously you know big pop. It, it's like you said, it's quirky. It is just. It, I always like to ask that what the what their influences are. I mean, our influences as a as the Stick Up Boys are a bit different. I mean, my, they, they're my early influences, but now I mean, we listen to all sorts. I mean, the the joy and my joy and hate of Spotify goes <laughs> in equal measure. You know, we get we get tens of thousand plays, you know, a month, and we don't get very much money. But, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, you know. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, our playlist, you know, a mini sub, my son, you know, our playlist can range from old blues. Uh, you know, I, I listen to the the British Top 40 every week. You know, I love modern pop music and I love you know, things like, you know, and all points in between, really. I, I don't listen to a lot of heavy metal music, I have to say, and, and heavy, heavy techno sometimes hurts me. But most other things I'm really just love I've got a passion for music so what I love about Spotify our playlist can go from a 1920s Robert Johnson song to a Taylor Swift song to whatever <laughs> I was trending on TikTok at this time I mean Boy Meets You is great you know and and to Taylor Swift to, to whatever you know and, and, uh, however much I hate the revenue we don't get from Spotify that we probably deserve I do love that you know the access to music you know we were heavily involved in the world music scene quite a long time ago through Real World and Peter Gabriel and Afro Sound System and stuff like that as well. So, you know, I, I classically trained in Indian percussion, you know, at the time. I was doing a lot of work like that. So, you know, we're, we're, between all of us, we've just got an absolute passion for pretty much every type of music, which is a joy that we can access it. Yeah, Peter Gabriel, you mentioned, he's a, he's a god. He... It's a god, what he did, yeah. I mean, we I don't know if you know a band called Afro Celt Sound System, yeah. Who are around, they were really good friends of ours, and um, really, and being around them and stuff, and hanging out with them, and, and the, all the world musicians they were bringing. You know, I'm classically trained in tabla as, as, as well as Nigeria, and you know, and it was yeah, that was that was an amazing kind of scene. And WOMAD, which is a big world festival, music festival in um. Uh, UK being involved in that scene was was that was really exciting. Yeah, that was really exciting time. That is very cool. Uh, um, now let's, let's just drill this down a little bit. Who would be, who would you consider to be your favorite all-time musicians besides you <laughs> and the rest um, of the Stick Up Stick Up Boys? That's, that's such a difficult question, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, that's why I asked. <laughs> and I, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm going to say something really obvious because because they're still relevant in my life. Now, and I'm just going to say the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now, I grew up with the Beatles. My parents, you know, my parents grew up in the '60s. You know, the Beatles were big. My mum used to take me to see like the bootleg Beatles. My, and recently, you know, last couple of years, my son has got into the Beatles. He's, he's learning it on piano. And we went to see a Beatles tribute kind of concert. And then we were we went away for a bit and we listened to the Beatles album in chronological order. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
<laughs> as a family and you know and that was just you know so it's an obvious choice and they're so amazing but you know the Beatles are every part of my life have had some kind of influence and even now in the last couple of years with my son who just you know who just loves him you know who just loves him as well so no, maybe it's not such a hard choice. It's an obvious choice. <laughs> I wanted to say something kind of obscure and weird, but I'm not going to because you can't beat you, can, you just can't beat the Beatles sometimes. Yeah, they they were definitely pioneers. There's no doubt about that. It, it's they were just great I, songwriters. I mean, they yeah, weren't great I, musicians, you know, technically they, but yeah, amazing, I mean, amazing songwriters. Ringo was a okay drummer, but but. It was just the way that they wrote the songs. I mean, it was, it was it, they had passion. Um, if you, I don't know if you saw the documentary that was on recently made by Peter Jackson. It's a really uh, long <laughs> documentary. If you get a chance to watch some something of it. by Peter Jackson, being short, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love Lord of the Rings. Uh, <laughs> I watched the extended editions. <laughs> Back to back, but yeah, no, you could see some of the dynamics. And you say that Ringo is not a good drummer, but you watch the way and you listen to the way that he follows what John or Paul are doing. Well, that's not what I meant. I didn't mean he wasn't a, a, a technically, he's not the greatest greatest drummer. But right. if, if you watch that documentary, if you watch the documentary, he kind of just follows them. He, he's very mm -hmm. placidly. <laughs> it's quite an interesting they drummer when you start. Each other. Yeah, for sure, and it's uh, yeah. I mean, but not, none of them technically were that great. Let's face it. I mean, yeah, that's true. Uh, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> but you know, they, they were all... they were good together. That's what what it was. They could absolutely, yeah. Um, let's see, Polar. Do you want to ask any questions, or are you busy stuffing your face? What are you eating, Polar? Um, <laughs> actually, I went. To go uh I, I i went to go get some uh some seafood from my mother oh so, you did you're not eating anything? and she literally called me at like last minute on this like literally and i'm like oh man <laughs> you've been a good boy you've been a good boy yeah man you've been a good boy you know you've always been good to your mom you know, this, uh, you know. so you got any <laughs> questions you want to ask yeah yeah i do uh like uh like a like uh what other stuff would you like to collab with <coughs> your music uh, besides hip hop itself? Like, I mean, like we like would you... yeah. I mean, we 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 make a lot of we you know before we were the Stick Up Boys, the Stick Up Boys was just a side fun project. We make a lot of music for for song libraries. Yep. So uh, yep. we make we, we make blues, we make kind of lounge jazz, we can make reggae, we can make rock, we can make indie. You know, we can make any kind of music you want, really. And, and you know, we then sell that music to, to films and TVs and to song libraries, and that's that's how we generate quite a lot of our income. So you know, we, we you know we, we might turn around and just do do an acoustic blues album, and it'll be like that. We just finished a reggae album quite recently. I can't play it because it's being signed exclusively to a library, <laughs> which, is quite, which is quite annoying sometimes with some of our music because they're all exclusive deals. And uh, but so yeah, I mean we, you know, one of the things I've I've loved about um, it's like Hive, you know, getting to know people and getting to know musicians. You know, we've been doing um, a little bit of stuff with Jux, who runs Rising Stars, who's awesome. Yeah. He he came he came Ooh. over and. Uh, the Turtle Project, who, who you might know, who does, um, yeah, I've uh, heard, of, I've heard of those guys, yeah, and no, then mean, Black Eye but uh, Beep, you know, Black Eye Butterfly, yeah, I've seen, I've, I've seen them around, I've seen those guys around, uh, yeah. this school for years, well, yeah, and so you know what happens is the boys kill me often when I say this. I'll hear one of their songs and say, you know, we'd really like to work on that, and then create loads of work for everyone uh you know we're not make we then we don't make any money from that kind of work <laughs> i just i just love the songs and they go what you want us to mix it rework it get it mastered through our masters get the artwork done and release it and i'm like yeah let's just do it because it's a great song so we're doing quite a bit of that and uh, you know and i think you know i'm love I, I love hive we, you know we've only been here a year but you know we absolutely 
just love it because I just think it's full of people like yourselves who are, I don't know, kind of, you know, taking a step step further into decentralised social media and trying to do their own things. And it's full of kind of people trying to be really, really creative, whether whether it's, you know, in a musical way or whether it's some of the games or some of the communities, you know, it's just people are kind of thinking a little bit outside the box. And, you know, we've been, you know, we've been through a lot of Hive and spent a lot of time in different groups just getting to know people and, you know, yeah. just really enjoying those those kind of really creative conversations and people's ideas and the whole energy behind Hive, which is why yeah. we've kind of stuck around, really, because we just like the, like the kind of adventure that, that we're on here. It's, it's a great place. You... I, I enjoy it too, man. And like, uh, you know, there's a lot of great people that I, I've seen on, I've, um, I've seen on Hive as well. And, you know, like, uh, there's so many like, uh, you know, different, uh, good things, like, you know, opportunities that can come from Hive from like, uh, you know, people wanting to do like stuff like, like games and music. And that's, so, uh, you know, I thought with, be a good thing to like you know like like the same problem that we had with spotify with uh not so many people getting you know so much uh credits for like the music and everything i think that you know hive is like something that you know we can look forward to and you know i i think uh you know more like how like divs get involved to you know get like more things you know to and like you know that blockchain could be a even bigger thing with like not only music but like you know like even further with like art with nfts and no nah. absolutely i mean nft tunes and blockchains and you know nft showroom you know that they're, they're you know they're pushing the boat for hive and i think it's great you know we, we've sold hundreds of nfts since we've been on hive you know you know that's awesome you know, man. i think you know i say thank you to everyone that, that gets one you know and, and you know it's you know, and that that's that feels like a real privilege to be involved in something like Hive, which is still so new, and it feels it's, it's cutting it feels, edge. Yeah, I like that feeling of feeling cutting edge, and and I, I like that feeling of hanging out with people that are cutting edge because they're kind of cutting edge kind of people, you know, and, and that that excites us, you know, that excites us, and you know, I, there's so many people I could I could mention. You know, from, from Jux, I've said of Rise Stars, the stuff that's going on at Brown Sin is amazing. NFT Tunes, the One Up crew, the Pizza crew are amazing, aren't they? Oh, I mean, yes. what they're doing there is amazing. You know, the pizza guys are and, nuts. <laughs> nuts. I mean, we were there when they started. You know, I can't it's... keep up with it, but you know that they're brilliant there. And you know, um, then you've got the cartel, and you've got you've got there, there, there's loads of other people that don't shout about themselves as well. Yeah. You know. Uh, um, you know, Owo says Zero is doing his game Sticks that he never shouts about, and it's a really interesting creative game he's creating. You know, and he, he, you never hear about it. And but then, you know, I mean, Splinter Lands, you know, they've done so much good for everyone. You know, so I mean, I'm just, you know, I'm looking, just thinking, there's so many great things. Block Blockhead Games run by Marky Marky Mark. I mean, oh, yeah. he, he's a He's cutting edge, that guy. I mean, he's such a, a sharp guy, and you know, from what all the things he did from Ape to the kind of Hive Punks, I know he's got some cool stuff coming out as well. You know, and Cyber yeah. X. You know, I mean, it's I mean, there's too many exciting things on Hive. I am. Discuss, you know, you know, you, since we're talking about the money aspect of things, you guys also sell your. Is it all your songs, or is are these separate? The the uh, live sound libraries and things. Is that we run we run a catalog of about two thousand songs. Okay, so now how do you how is that? Are those songs that were released, and then after so many so much time, you release the the samples for people to remix and use in other projects, or how, what, we've what got is so. That? Okay, so so we've got like about two thousand songs in our catalog. We're signed to exclusively to producer loops to make sample kits and um, construction kits and stuff. Some of it's very stick up boys uh, that we're doing deliberately for the stick up boys, and then some of it's very genre specific, and some of it's just stuff that we've done for a bit of a laugh. So what we tend to do with our agent and our manager is we look at the songs. 
and then play some or we get sometimes we get commissioned so like recently we've just got a commission to do to do some stuff for the royal academy of arts and then netflix very specific got a commission to do some Damn. music that's in uh <laughs> in this uh, Car- style of caribbean for a very big big I won't say who it's for so i can't but a very big big <laughs> song library you know uh so and sometimes we just kind of play songs where they are i mean you know, we could release a Stick Up Boys song of electronic pop ev- ev- every week for the next five years, and it wouldn't be a problem. You see, so nice. Yeah, we, what what we're not short sure of is, is songs, <laughs> 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 which is why the when I say to the boys, let's just work on this, they 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 look at me and go, what about those ones? And you know, I get excited about new things. And right but, um, now, yeah. would you would you suggest other artists do things like that too, or? Is is it kind of a hit and miss thing for people? Like you got to have, you know, just talent dripping out of you to be able to do something like that, like you guys have, or could any Joe Smo? You know, I mean, I don't know if you've, you've heard of the Electronic Music Alliance um, at all, but that's um, it's great. People like Nikki Harvey, uh, Tigers on there, and quite a few high people are part of that. And I think there's quite a lot of people on here, you know, like yourselves making. It's my biggest advice to anyone is you can't do it on your own. True. You know, we've got, you know, I, I have conversations with really talented producers all the time. Saying, well, I've got to do this. I've got to earn money. I do my Instagram. I have a, you know, <laughs> you know, we, you know, what, what we've done over certainly the last two years, you know, we've got a social media manager, we've got a radio plugger, we've got a whole team of musicians, you know, one of us only just does all the mixing. You now we've got an onboard master, we, you know, everyone gets paid who just does the mastering, you know, we've got someone that just does the artwork, you know. So you know, I, I do a lot of the coordinating and stuff of, of that, you know. So my advice would be, I think, to any musician, build, build a team, build a team around you and, and don't try and do it on your own because if I was trying to do this on my own, it would be impossible. Absolutely. There's yeah. many many hands make for light work, my dad always said. So. But that's that's true. But also yeah. people have different skills as well. Yes. You know, people have... You know, they let me chat to people because and do quite a bit of hustling because I like <laughs> chatting to people and they like mixing. So it kind of works out, you know, <laughs> the way it works. It was yeah. a, I, I worked for McDonald's when I was a kid and that was their, their thing was put all the aces in their places. Put the people that are good at fries on fries, people that are good on hamburgers on hamburgers, you know, that kind of thing. So it, yeah, I mean, trans- it translates yep. into every, you know, every business. Yeah, absolutely. Finding the right people with the right skills who are, you know, working together for one goal, you know, is is key. And for any artist, that would be my my advice. Try and start building up a kind of trusted team around you. Uh, you If you can pay them, (laughs) it's always good. (laughs) If you can't, (laughs) then it's for love. But, you know, if there's people out there who will believe in you. And I think, you know, if you ask them for help and it's very specific, then they, then they will help you. Now, we're trying to help anyone that we come across, you know. Part of everything we want to do is just spread the love around and try and support projects and, you know, and I think, you know, get get a team behind you if you can. Right. Absolutely. Now, back to the questions, though. What, what of all of your 2,000 songs in your catalogue, <laughs> <laughs> which one's going to be your favourite? I saw this question before, and it's really <laughs> difficult because yep. it depends what, what what day you ask me and when we've recorded it. You know what it's like. You know it can take us weeks to finish a song. Well, usually the songs you're hearing now are stuff we would have recorded three years ago. <laughs> right. You know, and and then I would have reworked, and then it had been mixed, and I'd have had to check the mixes, listen to the masters. So I can get quite bored of them, you know. Um, so it depends what day you're asking me. One of my favourite, I mean, going out that we released in the summer is is a banging tune. I know a lot of people on Hive like it. Um, actually, I could give you. I've just received the first remix of that. I should, I should give you that to play. Actually, because we released.
First time I've been out is 2022 Can't hide the cheeky smile in my eyes Can't believe that I'm free under the skies My mates are laughing, laughing and laughing It's still early in the night's just starting Jump up and down to get your attention Looking at me, it's another We're dimension We're going out We're going out tonight We're going out And no one's gonna stop us We're going out We're going out tonight We're going out And no one's gonna stop us literally just got it uh, in my inbox uh, by uh, James Black, who's a great, great DJ that we work with. That's awesome. Um, so, so going out, but uh, uh, there's a song, there's a song by us uh, called DNA, which I don't know, it always, it always, I always thought it was one of our greatest songs. Um, we we're really lucky as well that we got to collab with Francis Vautier, who's a really well-known French conceptual artist. Yeah, he let us use uh, let us use out uh, his his video for it. So, go nice. with our song. Um, so yeah, a song called DNA. I think that's a couple. I think we've minted that up on NFT tunes, which is. Um... I'm a synthesizer, a pacifier. I will lie to you. It's like a no
DNA going out obviously is big at the moment, which we love. Uh, so those two maybe BTT is a song by us, which is called Bedtime Teddy. It's a song. It's a song that we wrote for the kids. Cool. Stick up kids. Um, there's a really cool, a cool video uh, we made with the kids as well. I should drop drop you the link for that as well, maybe. Um, well, I will say thank you for not not uh, copping out and just saying all of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, honestly, it's not all of them. It, you know, it's really hard when you're, you know, I'm sure you both know when you're your you're worst cri critic. And I listen back to stuff and I go, you know, that's been released now by a different, you know, labels and it's too late to change it. I think I wish I'd just redone that or I wish I'd yeah. changed the mix on that or, you know, so yeah, no, it, it's, it's not easy. Um, Brains, who's one of the other stick up boys, he's he's even harder to please than I am. He's like never happy. He's never happy. That's why he does the mixing. Because he was never happy. I said, well, you do the bloody mixing. Um, because then you're happy. There you uh, go. So uh, so that works really well. So yeah, it's really hard. It's really hard. But I, I guess as well, there's some songs, you know, like BTT, DNA, even even uh, you know, going out, which is a banging tune, you know, which which have some meaning to us as well, and they're about certain times in. You know, I, I I'm I'm the the lead singer, so a lot I do a lot a lot of the lyric writing as well. So, um, cool, um, you know, so they mean something to me, I guess, as well, rather than just being you know a great recording or whatever, you know. Right. Well, the turn turn me up and and going out's my two favorite personal. Yeah. Going out. <laughs> well, going out with with Ambrose Chapel, who's a stick up boy as well, and and he's an amazing producer in his own right. 
he's, he's kind of joined the Stick Up Boys, which is great. He also does a lot of our artwork. Really? Cool. Uh, yeah, so cool. if, if you find Ambrose Chapel, if you see Ambrose Chapel on Hive, he's learning a bit about Hive and blogging. He's an amazing producer, an amazing artist who completely undersells everything he does so we've known him for quite he's you know, about three years now maybe we kind of bought him on board he's one of the newest stick up boys just because we love him love him we think he's, he's super talented but you know needed needed a team around him so we we, <laughs> we, we, invite, we invited him in, into our team and it's yeah it's been great ever since that's very cool now of all the influences you've had throughout your life I mean, you're gonna to have to answer this one both as a stick-up boy and as your own musician um who would you most want to collaborate with i say because of this you know you have to answer it twice one is for yourself and then the other for the stick-up boys because the stick-up boys already do have done a lot of collaborations and uh Okay, okay. For myself, it's quite easy. I've emailed Taylor Swift's management loads of times. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Cool. She's never got back to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I got our agent. So I got our agent and someone else to email them, our radio plugger to email. And so we could co collab with Taylor Swift, but I've still got zero replies. So, uh, I'm very persistent. It's a running joke that there's a court order that I'm not allowed 100 yards near Taylor Swift. <laughs> uh, well, that that's would not true. Not answering you. <laughs> yeah. So she's no, she's still still never got back to me, uh, which I've you know I feel feel sad about. Uh, and I, I do love her music as well. I think she's great. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I bought a mic just like hers, just because anyway, just just because I like her vocal sound. Um, <laughs> or it's a tube mic. Uh, it makes a lot of difference. Interesting. Anyway, I won't go into it because it's probably boring. Oh, no, it doesn't of... bore me. Trust me. <laughs> I'm into the tech stuff. So. I'm a, I'm a, I, got, of... I have gear lust out the, out the yin-yang. We've got an Avatone BV-12, if that means anything to you. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, you might look it up. Uh, <laughs> um, I mean, we've got Neumann's as well, but... Yeah, it's a different sound for sure. Um, who would the Stick Up Boys work with? I don't know. I don't know. We, we, anyone. We, we don't. Anyone that we think is great. I mean, the thing is, we listen to stuff and think that's great. You know, we'll we work with that. You know, the Turtle Project. I love working on the Turtle Project stuff. Uh, one famous? Oh, that, that, that's a tricky one. That's a really... I, I, Rag and Bone, you know, Rag and Bone Man. I'd like to do a song with him. Cool. He's a local boy. He, he, he kind of grew up in we're in brighton in the uk you know he's he'd be a really interesting singer to, to produce so you know yeah why not rag and bone man there stick up go. boys back in track rag and bone man on lead vocals we do a bit of the back in can hear it now it'd be awesome <laughs> that'd be cool um now of all the genres that you've done what is one that you haven't done but you would like to try well we've started with a little bit of electric kind of blues stick up boy style um we, we had a song called engine that was a little bit like that kind of started on guitar most of our stuff started on synths At the moment we're, we're working um Uber man who's one of the stick up boys is just an amazing of electric is a, a metal guitarist actually rock guitarist background <laughs> been, been working on a kind of some electric blues it's got that i don't know if you know the band gold frap sounds familiar if you, it's I, kind uh, of blues it's kind of blues but with that kind of backing kind of subby kind of moog electro sound but oh, with kind of ele okay. electric electric guitars on top you know that's what we've it's, been working on sounds like something you would hear on Crimson Clad show Cyber Buzz. Maybe, yeah, yeah, she maybe. She plays a lot of yeah. that kind of music. I listen, yeah, I went to her show once. It's so late. It's so late. I think I was, I was at one of your shows. I was like, I must go to bed. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we'll be working on that. Uh, we love doing reggae as well. Love doing reggae. I'm, I'm really, 
really sad that we did a whole album and I'm not going to be able to play it to anyone. <laughs> uh, we released one song called Happy, um, which is great, and there's a great remix of it uh, and a great, great video for it as well. Uh, which was the kind of style it was in, you know, and we got a great session player in to do all the brass, which really makes a difference. And we did a whole album and I'm, I'm never going to be able to play it anywhere, which oh. makes me kind of sad, which makes it's, me sad because it's really nice. Was it just the licensing you can't play it because of? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's gone to an exclusive license at Universal. So oh. we, we, we can't we can't touch it. Ah, that's sued, basically. Kind of sucks. Yeah, yeah. yeah we, we have quite a lot of stuff out there like that. Um, which it, it, it kind of sucks, but when when you know when you get your PRS statement every three months, it doesn't suck so much. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. And it doesn't suck, and it doesn't bother me as much. You know, uh, you know, and that's you know that that's that that's the good thing about having it in really good libraries and. No, it's a bit unpredictable, you never know, but you know, we you get it, it's hard sometimes to know where it's on, but we're on things like films and Discovery Channel and BBC and this and that and stuff and you know, not with the stick up boy's name. Uh, that's not how it oh. works, but it, it's um yeah. yeah, it's funny. Occasionally we find ourselves turn up on something or, or someone says, I just heard your music and it's it's, it's really funny to to watch it. Um uh, Recently, someone said, I just heard one of your songs. And I was going, oh, OK, that's great. What was it? And it was, it was on something by the BBC. Oh, that's they cool. Me. Yeah, yeah, so it's really cool. Uh, we very rarely get to find out when it's on and stuff. And I managed to get a hold of it. It's not even available now because it's like on for a week or something. And it was a woman's... It was brilliant because it was a woman's uh, director's um, show about... Um, Email life done by women's directors, and our song was being played to someone doing pole dancing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like we've made it. There's one of our songs. It, it was it was a kind of documentary thing about pole dancing and, and the ins and outs. And there's one of our songs, and someone's pole dancing to it in, on this BBC show, and it was just it, it did make make my day sometimes. Uh, yeah, I, I can sympathize with that because I. I got a song called The Weight of Life that was in a uh, documentary about long distance running in Africa, you know, marathon stuff. And oh, yeah. It was, oh. it was, they posted it on YouTube. This has been probably 10 years ago or so. And uh, I, I played the song in one of my shows on YouTube and I got a copyright strike for it. <laughs> From YouTube, yeah, right. <laughs> I was like, that's the first. I was like, dude, it's my yeah. song. <laughs> that's the f first first time we ever did a live stream. We we very rarely did, and we said, look, guys, about four years ago, we should do a live stream. I said, look, we we better be careful here. We we only played our own songs they're, they're, because they're all signed to different labels. We got a copyright strike on every single song of <laughs> that was <set. laughs> <laughs> and then annoying. they shut it down and I, and I was just like they're our songs you know there wasn't a problem it wasn't strikes it was just like this has been flagged for copyright and you're like yeah oh, I guess it's good you know I guess it's good our label's looking after us and it's all algorithmic but you know this is one of the reasons you know last year we started our own label as well we you know we've, we've signed a lot of lot of record deals and we, in the end we just decided we're going to start our own label so we did <laughs> cool that's another another thing we wanted to talk about was stick up music. Let's uh, what 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 does it take for an artist to start their own dang label? Well, I know a bit a lot of work, I guess. I mean, you know, we've signed so many record deals, and some of them have made us a, quite a lot of money. Most of them have made us no money at all. <laughs> you know, not 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 a penny. Not a penny, wow. you know, and and you know, so we set up our own label just to really represent our own music and our friends to retain copyright ownership of it, and 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 to and to and to you know to be blunt to monetize it, you know. I was right. like, well, you know, if that, if that song's made a fiver, I, I want to at least see that fiver, you know, and and you know, right, and so. 
Yeah, so what we've done, you know, we've hired a social media manager. We've obviously we've got graphics, websites, and stuff like that. But you know, you can release stuff as an independent artist these days, really, really easily. But you know, we're just finishing off kind of contract writing and stuff. And you know, I think questions again for it's easy, you know, we've been offered all sorts of deals. You know, people just want to own your music, so want to own your music. Right. It's, it's, you know, my. my if you want to start a label, just think what well, what are you offering the artist re realistically? If everyone wants fifty percent, someone offered me a, a deal recently where they wanted to pay us no money and they wanted fifty five percent of all royalties. It was the <laughs> worst. I'm not going to say who it is because they're on Hive, and I was like, this is the worst deal we've ever been offered. Um, no you know, you know, and you know, so, so so we wanted to just set up our own record label rather than. You know, give percentage. You know, I've got songs there that are earning money now that I co-wrote the fifty-fifty, but I'm I'm only making twelve point five percent of the royalties off that song. Right. You know, after it's got it's gone through agents, it's gone through whoever. You know, suddenly from fifty percent, I'm down to twelve point five. So the reason we set up our label was to, to kind of retain ownership and and do that, but also to support our friends you know are all artists and you know all our friends are artists and musicians you know and and like i said before hive is like a dream isn't it yes it hive is, is like a dream for us because you know we can monetize the content we're creating we're content creators you know we make music we make sounds we make art we we make gifts we you know we're content creators so some i you know i can't believe and i don't know how you do it that I, more artists aren't here you know that more musicians aren't here you know or more yeah. artists or filmmakers it's, you know it, we're just gonna it, yeah I, I think it's just because it's, it's so new and so young that they don't know it's there but we're we're trying to get that out there and we're trying to get but you know we've got amazing people like tdc tunes have joined and uh, james black you know uh, most of the stick up boys are on it in some way at the moment give or take uh, you know, which is which is nice, you know, and, and just to kind of trying to get into embrace it. But you know, it, when you start look, as soon as you start trying to explain tokens and wallet keys, everyone just looks at you and yeah, wants to go somewhere, somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> Their eyes just glaze over. <laughs> that's why. Yeah. I, that's why I say think of like Hive Keychain or Hive Signer. That's a password manager. I think they're not used to that kind of thing. Yep. And, uh, a lot of people aren't. Uh, it will get easier. I mean, Splinter Lands have been doing it, you know, and I, I, I know oh. NFT Tunes are doing it. I know Cine TV are going to be doing it. Yep. You now, know, um, when you're doing your own record label, how do you how do you handle the reporting of when we, of, you know, how do how do you get your royalties? I mean, is that through ASCAP, BMI, or anything like that, or? Well, we we. Our distributor is Symphonic. We use Symphonic, which is great, um, great distributor, um, uh, and they can set up automatic artist splits and stuff for for mechanical rights. And then obviously we're signed up for uh, Performing Rights Society and PPL in the UK that collects all our, our writing royalties and performance royalties and stuff. So we do all that. So you know you you get PRS royalties from Spotify. You get RS royalties from Instagram Reels if people use your songs. Um, cool. Gets, uh, a t you know, there's, it's you know, pennies, but you know, we've got a lot of songs. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, uh, uh, TikTok's an interesting one because you only get paid a set fee. Well, not very much. I can't remember how much. Like two, two, three cents or whatever, two or three p or something. It doesn't matter how many views that 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 video gets where they use your music. Actually, if you look at something like Instagram Reels or Facebook or or YouTube Music, Spotify, uh, you get paid. You know, you get paid per per stream, uh, right. and you get PRS for that. You get Performing Rights Society for that, as well as you know, obviously the mechanical rights, you know, streaming revenue for that for our distributor. So yeah. So on TikTok, if somebody uses a song and it gets three million views, you only get two or three pennies. Yep, that's a load of shit, isn't it? That that's TikTok is the Spotify of the video world. It's even worse than that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's even worse for musicians. 
you know, I, I think they are thinking of changing it. The last thing I read about it this was last year, maybe in the last year they were thinking of changing it, but they don't want to pay. They don't want to have to pay, do they? Well, the hell no. They got to keep, got to keep their shareholders happy. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know, but um, yeah. I mean, but you know, I'd I'd recommend anyone anyone that's getting a lot of views on on things like Instagram Reels or, or YouTube or Spotify. You know, you should sign up for Ever Performing Rights Society. Uh, we're signed up with the American one as well. Um, its name AC. What's it? Cap. That's Cap. Yeah, thanks as well for <laughs> stuff that we've done with American companies and artists and stuff. Uh, but um, the PRS is the one in the UK that, that we use. Nice. Well, we are at forty minutes here. Got any? What? 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 Throw out your links, because you know. That's right. I'll throw some links in the chat. I mean, our link tree. We've got a new song out Friday. I better mention that. Uh, yeah. That's that's with that's with TDC Tunes, yeah. um, uh, where he very kindly let us work on one of his tunes and sing over it and rearrange it so it's nice to do a bit of bit of a collab and get oh, i mean what's really cool. nice is getting new sounds in the studio um um you know i will throw in the links to a few of our videos as well that i've talked about maybe absolutely um, there's dna which is one of my favorite and i think you can get that on nft tunes as well yeah we get uh, but yeah we'll get all your links and throw them in the chat as as the as it's playing on the show tomorrow night. So Yeah, no, that'll be awesome. So um, it looks like it's live. <laughs> yeah, very live. Yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll try and make it. If, I, if I'm still awake, I would definitely be there, but I just... It's, it's, it's totally fine. It is, I get it. I get it. It is, it is very, very late for me. I mean, you've got Turn Me Up. You should play Turn Me Up, and I will... Oh, yeah. I will send you... I'll send you a link to a new remix. I don't want to put it in anywhere public. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Because it's not. I'll send you a link to the... Because I know it's very... I mean, a lot of people on Hive, I think because it's just as we arrived on Hive and we had, you know, going out, come out, I know a lot of people really love that, yes, that song. So, going out um, is freaking awesome. Well, James yeah. Black's just literally sent me a remix, that, you know, a few days ago. Uh, and I was just like, that's a banger. <laughs> you, know, you know, he's a he's a tech trance DJ. He works with people like Dave Pierce and people like that. He's got his own record label. But oh, he works nice. a lot with the Stick Up Boys as, as well. Uh, Keep on Techno Records and uh, Up to Data Records he runs. Uh, but yeah, he, he he does quite a few remixes for us. And uh, if he'll he help us do, he does live streams and stuff like that. So we'll send you, I'll send you a link in, in chat, um, cool. in DM for that. That to play. Is that well, all right? We do appreciate you coming on, and yeah, man. And even though know, we couldn't get you talked into staying out late, but <laughs> you never know. I might try and make it, but it is it is late UK time. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, I've, I've had, got a lot of meetings this week. You you've been there loud and proud a couple of times, and Raven even made it to loud and proud a couple of times, and it's it's late for you guys i i get it i totally understand it so. i mean tag but tag me off I, I will often listen on you know on that when you post it on hive especially if you tag me oh yeah i was like to listen uh you know i made it when um, when puko was on as well who i absolutely love puko and ori i think they're just fabulous yeah. people uh, they're a, yeah. puko cracks me up I love now. <laughs> yeah, no, they're just great. So, no, I will catch up. If I can't be there, I will definitely listen to it. And I really appreciate everything you guys are doing. I mean, yeah. you know, you've started something no new. It's, it's for music, you know, that we love. You're, you know, you're out there. You've started a token. You've created a community. You know, you're out there supporting, you know, people like Trenton and Raven and other musicians, you know, us, you know, and... and the blockchain is and it is appreciated and it's, it's hard work what you guys are doing and it's new and you know we, we we appreciate you a lot so i really appreciate you just giving your time up to talk to us you know or talk to me yep we're trying to trying to bridge the old with the new and make something totally brand new 
<laughs> it's exciting. It's that's, exciting. It's creative. That's right. Well, I'm, yeah, gonna, I'm gonna end the recording now. So.